I'm Peppa Grip. This is my little brother, Little Grip. This is Mommy Grip. And this is Papa Grip. In 1961, the Greens family lives happily together with Papa Green owning the gravel hill and Papa Green farmed as a tenant. So pretty! Let me ask Papa Green to give this farm to me before he dies. Papa, are you giving the farm to me? Son, this is an option. Oh, OMG, I love you so much. Please take good care of the farm. Okay, I promise. After Papa Green gave this option to Green, he didn't register the option. After some time in 1967, some disagreement occurred between the Green's family. Papa Green wishing to deprive Green of his option and sell the gravel hill to Mama Green. The option to Green was not registered. Let me sell this to you, Mama. Oh no, why did Papa Green sell the farm to Mama Green? I thought this is my farm. Let me go register the option now. <coughs> Mama Green died. Let me get back my farm. <coughs> The main issue considered in this case is whether the element of bona fide is required in Section 32 of Land Charges Act in the UK. Lord Wilberforce held that it should not. He said that such omission was a deliberate one by the Parliament since such a requirement would involve different inquiries into the purchaser's motive and state of mind. In this case, the reason why Lord Wilberforce has to determine the issue is because there was no express requirement of such in the statute. However, the important point to note is that there is no equivalent provision in Hong Kong. The law we are concerned here in Hong Kong is the common law concept of bona fide purchaser for value without notice, or a similar statutory provision of Section 3.2 of the Land Registration Ordinance, where bona fide is an express requirement. Therefore, although we are not concerned whether good faith is required in Hong Kong, we can borrow the discussion on bona fide from this Midland case. Regarding the meaning of bona fide, it means without intention to deceive, and in other words, in good faith. Lord Wilberforce held that such an equity concept governs over purchasers' conscience. It would be a mistake to suppose that the requirement of good faith extended only to the matter of notice, or that when notice came to be regulated by statute, the requirement of good faith became meaningless. Further on that, as ruled in an earlier case, Pilcher and Rollins, good faith is a separate test from the existence of notice. Even the purchaser may have knowledge of a prior unregistered interest, honesty and bona fide remains something that need further inquiry, and such an inquiry is isolated from notice. Therefore, in the Midland case, the respondent's argument of the mother not acting in good faith because she knew about the option formed between the father and the son beforehand is not enough. She was merely taking advantage of the law provided. Bona fide inquires both a genuine and honest absence of notice and more importantly, the whole conscience of the purchaser. So for this case, we have four main takeaways. Today we'll talk about everything farming. What is it? Purchaser. For value. Of legal estate. Bona fide. Unregistered interest will be fought against a bona fide purchaser for value without notice. Without notice. Bona fide not the same as without notice. <laughs> <laughs> Requires inquiry of purchaser's conscience. Hey, apparently, shop is only legal right. That's not considered bad faith. Do you remember all the key takeaways wherever you go? Yes, Miss Lee. See you, young Miss Lee. Let the law a hold you.